for everyone who told me no, I ended up doing better than they did. Before I leave this place, let me leave making a difference. The establishment, it is what it is today because of being able to accept failure and being able to learn from people. Where I am where I am because, uh, because of brokenness. Mm. Okay, so gentlemen, nice to see you again. And welcome to our wonderful Shiva's episode. It's all about breaking the average here. Uh, gentlemen, last time was epic. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, man. Whose cocktail yeah. won, by the way? Mine. Yours? Yeah, it was, was a tie. Between yours? No, I it was won. a tie. It was a tie. Yeah. It was a tie. Between <laughs> yours, huh? So we've People got some... People rewrite history, man. Right. Well, today as we continue to break the... Let's first toast. Mm. To of breaking course. the average, gentlemen. It's breaking the and average. And this episode... Cheers. We shall Cheers. reveal a lot Cheers. about these gentlemen because we need to know about them. Mm. Cheers. Cheers. Daktari. Cheers. Nice to see you. So, G. Yes, sir. Um, I know you know we've been friends for a long time. Mm. Ages. Yeah. These guys mm. know how far back we go. It's incredible. Definitely. And we work in the same building. Mm. But, G, you're a superstar. And I just want <laughs> to know, what is it that makes you so extra? What is it that is never, ever average about you? I think, um, well, thanks for the compliment, first of all. A superstar con congratulating an ordinary <laughs> man like me, you know what I mean? I think for me, it's just that I enjoy challenges. And I, and I really look at, I don't look at life in the same way that many people look at life. Some people, a lot of people look at life in just as a, I need to get what I can get. Whereas my view has always been, I need to do what I can do. Because I, I firmly believe that if you chase money, it runs from you. True. But if you chase passion and if you stay abreast of what's happening and you're continually educating yourself and you're continually evolving, then life becomes a journey of self-discovery, you know? Right. Absolutely. So for me, I mean, my story, I would always say that the best thing that ever happened to me was when I was getting into the industry, all the radio stations that told me no yeah. was the best thing that ever happened to me because I was, you know, 20 years old. I wanted to do radio. It's all I wanted to do. And um, I remember approaching five, six stations in London and everyone was like, no, 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 no. So I sat there one day and I, I was in my, my little bed sitter and I said, you know what? If nobody's going to put me on their station, I'm going to start my own station. So, I, I, you know, the pirate radio scene is really yes. big in the UK. Yeah. So I spoke to some guys like, how do I get a transmitter? How do I get a frequency? How do I do this? And... Um, that was the start of it. I, I remember going up on the roof and putting the aerial up and doing all this stuff. And I remember the first time of like saying, you can give us a call on X, Y, Z. And the phone rang and I'm like, wow, people are actually listening, listening to this they thing. Do, yeah. do you know what I mean? And that was, that was it. For everyone who told me no, I ended up doing better than they did. My station overtook all of them. I ended up giving their DJs work. I ended up poaching their DJs. I ended up throwing no. concerts and events and stuff. So for me, I thank all of them who said for no. For saying no. For no, because yeah, it forced yeah. me to evolve into, into who I am today. So for me, I think it's just a journey of like, you know, we're only here for a limited time. True. So let's just do what we can do and let's enjoy what we're doing and let's have fun with it. Let's toast some chivas, let's have Absolutely. some drinks. You know what I mean? Cheers. And yeah. enjoy the journey because Amen. too many people. To saying no. Yeah, some saying no. To saying no. To saying no. Absolutely. Definitely, man. So one me, thing about G is. You're so comfortable now amongst the biggest stars in the world. Because I've seen your pictures, I've followed your videos, you know, the biggest stars in the world. And you're so comfortable around them. Mm. That is mm. so yeah, epic. Well, I, I mean, the, I get that, but you know what it, you know what it is? Don't be humble, G. No, yeah. I understand. You yeah, think he's I, a superstar in his own right. No, so. you know what it is? It's bigger, it, it looks bigger than it actually is to me. Right. Because the thing about it is, if you think about it, and I'm sure you can relate to this minor, you, Brian, Anthony. There are so many people who will relate to you because of who you are. True. True. So, so put that on the, an artist perspective. Let's talk about conscience or whoever. There are so many people like, oh, this is conscience. Or this is whoever, right? But if you want to connect with somebody, don't connect with them on the you're the star yeah. Yeah. level. It's like, hey, what's going on? What's going on? Hey, what's going on? What team did you support? Hey, yeah. this, your tour looks like it's been mad. Yeah. What's going on? How's your daughter? How's ah, this? How's yeah. that? You, you always connect with people on the, like, 
on the most human, human level. Fundamental yeah. level, yeah. So so when I say, like when I go to Jamaica, I go, or if I'm in Atlanta or wherever I'm at, and I'm meeting artists, I'm not meeting artists who are artists. I'm yeah. meeting artists who have become my friends yeah. because I've been a friend to them. Yeah. True. Because you don't want to just, you know what it's like, like in the day, there are so many people who will run and say, yo, that's mine now, that's mine. And, yeah. and they want to be around because of who you are. True. Mm-hmm. Whereas you just want someone around you who's genuine. Genuine. True. True. You know what I mean? True. So that's, I love you know, that. I that's love the way that I look book. at it. Yours is a different story. You came from a corporate background and went to the club scene. Right. And not just any corporate background, banking. Right. You wow. never find someone who goes from banking to club scene, which are very successful at. What was it that made you realize, you know what? I'm not average. I'm more than average. What was right. that moment? And what made you make such a big switch seamlessly without worry? Right. I think for me, it's just the relentlessness and just not fearing failing. Because failing comes at any particular point in your life. I mean, I started off as um, a chocolate stacker in, uh-huh. in a factory. Um, and I used to do that because I needed clothes when I was in uni. My dad couldn't buy me like all the latest clothes and things like that. And I always wanted to be fresh in uni. So I got a job, I was being paid 300 shillings a day. So after that, I just started looking for opportunities everywhere. So I got a job at a contact center, at a bank. Um, used to talk to people, people complaining about their transactions and things like that. Later on in the bank, guys used to tell me I used to be very social. I used to go to the marketing department, um, the sales department, just talk to people. And guys were like, why don't you try another industry? So I got a job at uh, another industry that sells alcohol. I was their brand ambassador for a while. I did that for two years. Later moved on to another alcohol industry. Did that for two years again. And then my last job was also at an alcohol company. So I've done average these six to seven years in an alcohol company. So I figured I got so much experience dealing with bar owners. Uh, analyzing their data, looking at how they're being successful. So I was able to learn from all these different bar owners. So the best thing was I had so much experience there, why not open a bar? And there were so many limitations to it and it was a scary thing to even think of. So I approached two of my very close friends. I was like, I have a crazy idea, let's open a bar. And it also ties back to people saying no to you. So I'm in an investment group with some famous artists here and there. And I told them, let's open a bar guys. And no one said nothing in that WhatsApp group. Mm. So that's when I, I fell back to my friend and right. they were like, let's do it. It's a yeah. crazy idea, but let's do it. Yeah. Mm. Started off very small. I remember the first week we didn't have a generator. Power went off. Mm. Guys did not leave. Guys were having fun in the darkness. I think we, we got robbed that day because you couldn't even tell what bills were which. <laughs> but that's yeah. how you learn. Yeah. You yeah. live True. and you learn. True. And I mean, the establishment, it is what it is today because of being able to accept failure and being able to learn from people. And also what G said, yeah. being able to accept people saying no to you and learning from them. Mm. Because I just, and the way you just went from banking to being a brand ambassador, as comfortably as you're doing banking, right. to being mm. a club owner, as right. comfortably as being banking and being in a, an ambassadorial role, yeah. I find that impressive. The first time I interacted with Dr. Rain, it was online. We were bang in the middle of the pandemic and he was someone I never met until very recently, but he really inspired me. Wow. And he put a human face to the caregivers then, because then we were complaining about everything. Remember, uh, quarantine, you had to pay 100,000, but we were trying to wonder. Hospitals are just asking for money. These guys are just mercenaries. But he used to post every day, if not a picture, a video, yeah. mostly a video. And that man had gems of wisdom and meeting you was amazing. Now you're juggling like, a lot. First of all, yeah. he's a real doctor. Yeah. You're a real doctor. Real, real. What's your real. speciality? Uh, pediatrics. Pediatrics. Yeah. Kiddies. Watotos. Watotos. <laughs> yes. So how, how, how do you go from there to here and still be so successful at the same time, bro? Oh man, I don't know. I think it's just my character. It's the way I've been built. But it's also, man, um, what G said, being told no so many times, um, trying to be put in a box. So for me, like when you say that, you know, I I was the face of the healthcare workers and what what they were going through. It's because, you know, our profession, you know, when you're a doctor, there's, there's this perception that 
doctors you know make money and you're successful and, and things like that but it's honestly you know it's just like any other job you just learn the skill sets go do it you don't really earn much and then i started understanding that a lot of the things that people the perception about you know doctors healthcare workers is that you guys place us up here but because we have that that pressure that you have to live a certain type of way yeah. you're too proud to say bro it's really not what not all yeah. you know yeah not all that yeah it's not all that and um i just had to put a face because people are not talking and for me i think it's the way my mother raised me i yeah. always speak out when there's adversity i'm i'm the guy who makes the dumb comments where people are like Shh, just keep yeah. quiet just i hope yeah. i hope dr rain doesn't open his mouth yeah, yeah. because i'm 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 that person i'm if something is wrong i'm yeah. going to speak about it true so 2020 fast forward 2020 we're all locked in we're at home there's a lot of things i wanted to do especially with healthcare promotion online yeah. and things and i couldn't get it done true. i was like you know what smartphone selfie mode let's talk to some people yeah. let's see if people will actually understand Mm. And the time I went viral is when I sat down and there were so many of us dying, so many of our friends dying of covid. True. Literally, I remember one month we lost five guys. Yeah. And I was like, and I'm still going to work. Yeah. I'm still dealing with covid. True. I was like, you know what? I'm going to die and nobody cares. True. And that, that, that that's the one that really got me. Yeah, that's the one that got everybody yeah. because I I just came to realize that you know what? Yeah. At the end of the day, you will be buried and forgotten but before you leave so I, i got to a point where i was like before i leave this place let me leave making a difference you know yeah. so that was that was what it was wow. for me and then you know i just started talking about different things healthcare i could only speak about healthcare yeah. what what's going on in the government and things like that yeah but my journey is crazy um i mean i i am i am a, an artist first things first by the way this guy is an artist really a recording artist yeah yeah a real one as <laughs> if really he's got jams out and g you know who told me about you yeah. play me his song g g is one of the guys you know like it's that thing of saying no like i've been an i yeah. was an artist in in botswana i was an artist in russia i mean yeah. i've worked with like my idols growing mm. up you know like groups hip hop groups yeah. i'd never thought for me i know kenyans nowadays are like i'm not opening up for any foreign right. acts but i was opening up for for big names in Russia and that for me was accomplishment yeah. and sitting wow. and being told mm. yo you're a doctor and you Can't just opened it. up there's something about you 100%. there is something yeah. Yeah. yeah so for me i think you know it's just a blend i just doing passion doing what you love you know i came back to kenya expecting that the the doors will also be open to me you know like yeah. the way they were in russia yeah. I was living <laughs> right. that i was really living a good life yeah. in terms of you know celeb and yeah shows then mm. came back to Kenya everybody saying no 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 and then there were certain gatekeepers you know and um i i just kept pushing mm. to a point where i got it right i remember that when when one of my songs hit and we were g and g's like you've been on this you've been on my radio show many times but g calls me brian brian yeah. let me tell you that's how you know me and g are close yeah mm. this one here this new babash this one is the one. the one so it was that one record that people actually recognized that oh this guy can actually rap yeah you know this guy can and actually so good you know he is so good yeah. yeah this one deserves a round of applause definitely man most That's definitely one round of applause because of where it's come from let's give him a round of applause 100%. gentlemen you've asked g you've asked anthony you've talked to me but minor what's your Look, story man, for real if if there's Ooh. legendary of the legendary you know this like we we're, we're, we're true all of us trust me all of us are humble that you can you can you can be inspired by us but we want to know minor no bs aside no no bs the, tell the, us. the truth is um where i am where i am because mm. uh, because of brokenness mm. Mm. and i remember way back in the late 90s i brought some dj's with dj pinye yeah. right right yeah and a couple of friends brought some dj's from the uk Uh, DJ Kofi and others I'm sure you interacted with Kofi yeah. in the UK. So we brought them over and uh, we needed to book some ads because we, we were performing at the barn. That was at Congress mm. way back in the day. And the only two stations we could go to, either Metro or Capital. Right. So I went to Capital. I bought the ads and paid the money. Then who was it? I think it was the late Eric Ndavi. He said, um, we'll need 40,000 bob 
and I said for what? They said for the voiceover. I said what's a voiceover? I said the ads are spoken. You hear the ads on yeah, radio. Yeah, right, Someone right. speaks the, those words. What? Yeah. So I said I don't have forty k. Can I do it? Myself. I said look, it's your ad. If it's yeah. rubbish, it's rubbish. So I did it. Then they asked me, well, do you wanna be on radio? I said why? Have you ever thought of it? No. Mm. We are interested. I said I've never been on it. I've never imagined. Right, right. So I said, okay, you go and do your DJ gig, and then come, then back. come back. Yeah. Then let's talk. Wow. wow. And that's it. So if you had 40k that day, like, I wouldn't be here. So wow. Eric actually was the one who saw yes. something. I've got to toast yeah. Eric. No, Yo, yes. we got to toast Eric. Man. Talk yeah. man. Definitely. Talk man was extra. He was regal Talked all the way. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Yes, that's Definitely. my story. If you had 40,000 bob that day, I probably wouldn't be here. Mm. See how wow. it works. That's how it okay. works, man. Cheers, man. Cheers. 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 To brokenness. Cheers. Well, well goodness is not a bad thing. And yeah. being told no is not a bad thing yeah. either. Mm. It's how you tell it into an opportunity. So thank you so much. That's all we've got time for. Hope you enjoyed this series. I hope it was eye-opening. And always remember, break the average. If you don't break the average, you'll never grow. Till next time, have a great Shiva's weekend. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.